Hello everyone, I'm RX34, so gamers. And today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Pinnacle Dazzle DVC100 capture card. Now I've taken all this stuff out, here's the box here. Yours is probably going to look the same sort of, look like the same sort of thing. Now this is, a, as I said, a DVC100, but um, this will apply for most models and in fact most SD capture cards. Now the reason I'm doing this video is I'm not going to be using this capture card anymore. That's right, my brand new HD Horpag Colossus capture card has just arrived and this one is being donated at least temporarily to the Stack Nerd to allow him to record up some videos. So this is for him and also for anybody else that needs to know how to do this. Now the first thing you're going to need is everything out of the box. You're going to need your capture card and the installation disc. You're also going to need the composite cable for your PlayStation three splitters, a double ended composite cable depending on how far away your playstation is from your TV and your computer um, is obviously going to depend on the length of cable you're going to need and also if you don't have a composite connection on your TV and you have a SCART you're going to need one of these although this does come with the playstation of course you're going to need a TV, a playstation 3 or xbox 360 console and a computer which is currently hiding under my desk. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our card and we're going to put it somewhere where we're going to be able to reach it from both the PlayStation and the TV. It's going to be fine here for me so I'm just going to leave it on my table. We're going to get the USB end and we're going to plug it in to one of our computer's USB ports. Now our capture card has been connected to our computer's USB, we need to plug in the composite cables. Now the first thing you need to do is um, turn on your PlayStation and you need to get your PlayStation 3 composite cable adapter. Now whatever you're currently using you're going to have to um, unplug and put this in. If you're using component cables this might be a little trickier because they use the same connection. This is a component cable, and that's a composite cable as you can see that go in the same socket. So you'll need to do the next bit um, before you swap them over. However, I'm using HDMI and if you're using HDMI as well, this is perfectly fine. Of course, if you're already using these composite cables to play normally, you can completely skip this step. So now, now um, now we've got that plugged in, we don't have to change anything on our PlayStation quite yet. What you're going to want to do is you want to get these splitters and you're going to plug them in to the capture card. It doesn't matter where they go just yet. So one in to the left audio, one into the right, and one into the video. Now you want to plug these in as far as you can to get a good connection because the more metal that's touching, the better the connection you're going to get. Now, what you want to do then is get the cables that you just plugged into your PlayStation. Now, this is where it's important to plug them in right. So, um, if you don't know which colour's which, these are colour coded on here. So, yellow is a video, and you can plug it into, doesn't seem to matter which way round. Yellow is video, and um, I've forgotten which way round these are. Yeah. Okay, so yellow is video, white is left audio, and red is right audio. So you want to plug these in to one end of the splitters. Now what we've got is capture card, three splitters, and your PS3 composite cables plugged into one end of the splitters. Now, this is when you want to get your double-ended composite cables. Now these are fairly long, I'm not sure the exact measurement of these. These are actually slightly too long for me because um, my PlayStation is very close to my computer. I don't really need it this long, but it doesn't really matter. It's better to have it too long than too short because you don't want to be trying to stretch the wires. Now you just do the same thing. Um, I have black, red and yellow cables here instead of white, red and yellow, but just use some common sense and plug it into what you think is the right one. To be fair, it doesn't really matter as long as the right cable finally ends up into the right socket on your TV. So now on the card, 
we've got the splitters, we've got the input from the PlayStation, and we've got the output to the double-ended composite cables. Now, we need to get the other end of the double-ended composite cables and plug this into the back of your TV. Now, I don't have a composite connection, so I'm going to be using this composite to SCART connector. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference. You just need to connect it to your TV somehow. So I'm just going to connect these and I'm going to connect this into the back of my TV. Okay, so that's now plugged into the back of my TV. Obviously, if I was setting it up to actually use this again, I wouldn't be setting it up in the middle of my table. I'd put it way behind there, out of the way. But this will do just fine for demonstration. So here's the output double-ended com composite cable runs all the way from here around to the back of the TV. And here is the input from the PlayStation. Now currently I'm still on HDMI, so now the next step is to switch over. And this doesn't require your computer to be on, you can um, still play like this. So you need to go into um, settings, and you need to scroll down to display settings. Now sorry I'm recording this with the camcorder, but obviously I can't record it with the capture card. Now you need to go into video output settings, and here you will be given four options, HDMI, component D-terminal, component S-video, and AV multi SCART. Now uh, it will currently be selected on what you're using, I'm currently using HDMI, and you need to scroll down all the way to the bottom to AV multi slash SCART. Click right or X there, and I am using RGB composite cables, not the component. YPB, CB, PR, CR cables. So select RGB and then um, it will just say that it's going to go temporarily blank. Having done that, you'll then need to turn over to your AV uh, SCART and you'll have 30 seconds to do this and select yes. You'll then be uh, presented with this screen. Uh, it's given the standard power and 576p. Um, I've never had any uh, good results with 576p it just goes into a blank screen so you will have to put up with interlace just click right here and um, if you're using a square TV then select 4.3 uh, if I'm using a widescreen TV so I'll be selecting 16.9 it will then just give you a quick overview of the settings and you want to press enter to save then want to press set output audio settings uh, you want to do the same thing go down to audio input connector slash scart slash AV multi um, and it should do it. And I don't know if you can hear, but we now have some nice sound. So um, I'm just going to start off World at War. Now at this point you'll need to turn on your computer if you haven't already. When you're getting power to the capture card you'll see this little green light comes on. Now, first time through, you're going to put in this install disk. This is going to install um, some drivers, some software. I'm using Windows 7 Home Premium, I'm also using the 64-bit edition, so I can confirm that works. It should also work on XP and Vista. Uh, I don't know about older versions, but I assume not many people are using older than XP. I'm not going to go through the install, because as I said, I've already done it. Um, but once you've installed it, you'll see a program on your desktop. And it has an icon that looks like this, and it's called Pinnacle Instant DVD Recorder. And uh, it will say, you've got a couple of options, so you've got Select Source, Select Burner, Select Menu Style, and Recording. And again, sorry for filming this with uh, the, cap the camcorder, but FAPS for some reason doesn't seem to want to record my desktop. So I'll just try and hold it steady. Now you, you want to select the cap Source as a Dazzle DVC, Dazzle DVC 100. As you see here, World at War pops up in the corner. Uh, there's, some, there's some options you can go through brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, um, video standard. I don't know why that's set to NTC, I should probably set it to PAL. Of course, that depends on the area you're in. Um, you've also got the audio input and uh, the video input. So if you're using S video, which I know I haven't covered in this, but you can also use S video. Um, so, okay. Just take a little while to save my set. Select burner. Now this is uh, fairly important. You can record to uh, these are my disk drives, but I want to record to a hard disk folder. So I'm just going to go down and save it in my Psychic Games folder. 
videos, gameplay, uh, World of War, and we'll put it in the ball folder. Okay, so once you've selected um, your video input, and of course your hard disk folder that you wish to save this to, then you're all ready to start recording. Now uh, you can select recording time, because this thing isn't really designed to record video games, it's designed to record films off of uh, camcorders. So if you already know how long you're going to be recording, then that's fine. But otherwise, just leave it to uh, much longer than you think you're going to be recording. You've also got some video recording. You want to set this to best if you're thinking about uploading this, because any layer than that is going to look horrible. And then of course you've got to start recording. Um, I'll just start this off recording. Now this is where the splitters come in because you can double click this to make it big but unless you want to play in this fuzzy little screen then I wouldn't recommend doing that. There's also a lot of audio input output lag and uh, controller input lag. So what you want to do is you want to turn over to your external game which you've already set up. So all you want to do then is start playing the game. Now I'm not going to go into uh, too much of a match here, I'm just going to... That, that'll do for recording. So uh, once, once you've uh, stopped recording, there's a little timer here that tells you how long you've been recording. Uh, you're going to press stop recording and that's going to output it as a file. Now, done, your disk is ready. You can now play it. If you want to start recording again, you can just press start over and this will come back up again. Now to watch your video you just want to do the same thing as any other file on your computer. Just go and locate where you saved it. Now save it into a video TS folder um, and as a VOB file. So here it is. So here you go, that's what we've recorded. Unfortunately, it's uh, displaying it in 4.3, that's just how it records. If you've got uh, one of the more expensive Dazzle Capture cards, Pinnacle Studio allows you to record in 16.9. You can buy that separately, so um, I'd recommend that if you're going to seriously get into recording with your Dazzle. Otherwise, it, in your editing software, you can just stretch it out and it should look fine. Uh, also, one more thing, there are these little lines at the top, so in your editing software, you will have to edit... Um, just crop it a slight amount. But there you go, there's some um, recorded footage. Simple as that. I hope this has helped you guys. Thank you for watching and stick around for next time when I'm going to be showing you how to set up my whole page Colossus.